The invention of a battery is a great thing. They power our favorite cell phones. They start our favorite cars. They run my favorite power tools. What we don't like in our cars is when our batteries die. So what can we do to prevent this into the future? Well, very little effort. Stay tuned and I'll show you something that may help. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're a returning viewer, much appreciated. If you're a new viewer to the channel, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff everybody asks you to do. Um, today, I'm going to go over battery maintainers. Um, I started looking into this. I bought my Boss 302 Mustang in June. I want to take care of it. I'm not driving it every day. It's going to sit. I live in upstate New York, so this thing's going to sit from December to most likely March. Might get it out once or twice if I can catch a day just to get out, but it's going to sit here. So I'm not going to go anywhere with it. So it's not going to start. It's not going to move. I want to be able to maintain the battery. I don't want to have to worry about replacing it every couple of years because it sits here and doesn't charge for three months of the year or four months of the year. So I started looking into it. Very first place I went, Battery Tender. Their company I seen on, some of you may remember the Speed Channel. I remember watching car shows Saturdays and Sundays and they had commercials. And I thought they were great, didn't really understand what they were. As I got older, I understood what they were. Went to their website and within a half hour, I had a whole different perspective of Battery Tender. Their website was such a mess to me. I couldn't figure out what I needed and what I didn't need. There was no clear path for me. Completely turned me off. What do I do? I don't know where to go. So I start watching videos on YouTube. I run into a video that had Battery Tender and a company called SeaTech. SeaTech, I started looking into them. I was like, okay, this might be a reputable company if they're comparing them to Battery Tender. They're made overseas and I'd realized that they work with a lot of the OEMs. So if they work with the OEMs, you know they're gonna be a good quality product. But I also remember my buddy having a jump pack and he told me they had chargers and other things too. It was a company called NoCo. And I remember he had really, he's had really good luck with his jump pack. So I looked, went to their website. Their website was phenomenal. If you are new to this and you don't wanna to try to figure it out, please just go to their website and look through and they lay it out you know, smallest to biggest, the uh, least amount of charge time, the most charge time, lays it out step by step when you click on it, exactly what features it has. I mean, it, their website was so easy for me to figure out. I ended up getting the NoCo Genius 5. I love this thing. Um, I've had it since I bought it. I think I bought it in July. Um, I bought it on Amazon Prime Day in July they had. I think it was like the 15th and 16th of July. It normally, re it normally retails for around 90 bucks, but I picked it up on Amazon Prime Day for 54. So it was, it was a really good deal. I would just check the Amazon before I started shooting this video here and they were 69. So, and you know what I also really liked? If you go to these companies' websites, Amazon always has a different pricing than the website that they'll have. They'll, they'll be way more expensive. NoCo, what their sale, what you find on Amazon, that's what you find on their website. So if you want to order direct from them and you don't want to go through Amazon, you don't have to. You're going to get the same price at their website most of the time. Prime Day, that's a little bit different. I feel that was a really good deal on these. I feel this is very nice, uh, high quality. I just wanted to go over what it looks like here and a little bit of how it works. So this is how you're going to get it. This is the box. I keep mine in the box. You'll get the user's guide. You'll also get the accessories and more guide here. Pull the foam pieces. You pull it out. You get this box inlay and it sits right there. This is what you get. You get your AC cord to plug into the wall. It's about four foot long. And then you get your lead cord. So which has a quick disconnect on it. And also you get the alligator clips with it too. So these would clip right on here. Let's go ahead and do that. Come with little covers, it's nice. Release, now click together. And you can't pull them apart. Whenever you need to get them apart, you just push down, pull up, just like an electrical connection on a car. So, and you also get a, a wall mount. So what this is, is it'll bolt on the wall like so, just like this. This is a Velcro adjustable strap, just like a belt. 
loosen it up, stick it in there, tighten it down, and then you can mount it on the wall. Uh, this is the unit that you get. This is the five, like I said, they got the one, the two, the five, and the 10. And I was debating between the five and 10. I went with the five. I just wanted to be able to charge my batteries and maintain them. You get a three year warranty with this. They're made in the USA. Big, big, big key to me. Um, I'm, you know, some people it doesn't matter to them. They want the cheapest thing possible to go to Harbor Freight and buy their version of this. I'm not, I want something that's good quality. It has a back by name, so it's got a three-year warranty made in the USA, reasonable price. Got a circuitry in here for uh, over temp to adjust the voltage based off a ambient temperature. So say it's 100 degrees and you're in Arizona, or it's negative five degrees and you're in Canada, this will adjust to keep from over charging and under charging batteries. It doesn't want to overheat them. So it'll adjust its voltage. So it may slow down as it gets hotter out and it can speed up as it gets colder out. That's a really cool feature in here. So there's a lot of built-in technology here. Uh, it's got a circuit in there, of course, for maintaining. It, it'll read if it starts losing juice. If there's a drain somewhere on the battery, it'll automatically detect once it hits a certain voltage, it'll start charging again to keep that battery up in juice. That's what kills batteries is, believe it or not, it's actually heat. A lot of people believe batteries are killed in the cold. They're not, they're killed in the heat. Um, they can't take heat, but you never notice it until winter time. And the reason why is it takes a lot more cranking amps to start your car in the winter than it does in the summer. So a battery that can be going bad in the summer and you'll never notice it because it takes little effort to start a car in the summer versus in the winter, that very first cold day, What's the first thing everybody has happen? My car doesn't start and it's the first cold day of the year. Well, that's normally because the battery was already going bad. Now that it's cold, you actually are asking for them cold cranking amps and you need all of them. Guess what? It doesn't have them no more. So some things that, you know, it's, that's, that's what I like about this. That's why I wanted it. I want to be able to protect against that, pr protect and prolong my battery life. So let's go ahead, get over to the car and I'll show you how this works. All right, we're back over at the car here. So now I got my charger right here. So what we're gonna do, something I, I found, we all know fender covers. And if you work on your cars at all, classic cars, you always see people lay them over the fender. There's some kind of rubber vinyl pad, try to keep from scratching the paint. Well, I like these. These are fender covers from the rag company and they're made of microfiber actually. And that's why I like them. Microfiber is a lot easier on paint. So I like to wrap that around right there and then my cord can dangle down off and I don't have to worry so much about if it's gonna scratch anything. So it completely covers that up. Let's go get the power cord here. I like getting that around here, this post. And then we'll plug in here. And then I always shove the extra up underneath or hang it on the wall. Right now I'll just shove it underneath so I don't trip over it when I'm walking around. So we're around there. Now we'll go ahead and hook up the alligator clips. For a lot of us, we already know, but those that don't, red is always positive or the plus. There's always a big red lead on it here. So red to red. There, make sure you get yourself a good connection. Black to black. So it's negative. And then it'll normally have a black wire on it. Take this end and hook it to your lead of the charger. So, clips right together, snaps together, doesn't pull apart, and you should be good to go. All right, now we're all hooked up. You can see, got our indicator light showing that we have juice. We plugged it into the wall. We've hooked the alligator clips to the battery and hook it to the lead. And this is how it'll look when you plug it into the wall. If it's not hooked up right, whenever you hit this button, it will, this will just flash. Rather than moving through these modes, it'll just come back on, it won't do anything. So, and then that's when you need to go check your connections. But if you got a good connection, it should do this. So you hit the mode button right here, and it'll go through the very first one's your standard battery, which I have in this car. You got AGM battery, lithium battery. If you hold down on this for five seconds, it'll go to six volt, which this isn't a six volt, but if you click it again after you do that, it goes into this 12 volt repair mode. And what that's supposed to do is help old degraded batteries. 
<clears throat> that don't have much life in them, this is supposed to help rejuvenate them or re help restore them. It doesn't always work. So if it's in repair mode, it'll flash red like this. And it takes, I think my truck battery, it took two days and it'll stop flashing and it'll go back to the indicator light here as it's just power, it's got power. So now let's go ahead and I will show you what this looks like in a normal application here. So we're hooked up normally. Now that I showed you some of the different features here. So you're gonna click the mode, it takes you to your normal standard battery like I have in this car and you just let it go. You see that indicator light there? The camera's not picking it up too well, but you can see it, it, it looks like it's kind of blink. And what that is, is it's actually pulsating dim to bright, dim to bright on red. And you can watch it. I think it's going to go really quick because there's nothing wrong with my battery here. So what this will do is it'll slowly go up in your indicators here. It'll go green and it'll pulse. And then once it gets the bulk of the charging done, these lights will go out and this one will pulsate green. What that is, is it's uh, optimizing the charge. So now we're on green. What that is, is it's done the bulk of the charge and now it'll, it'll be just an optimized. So just pretend like these went out and it'll be just the green and these will be all dark. It'll be optimizing the charge and then once it's done optimizing, it'll go solid green. And after that, that means it's fully optimized, fully juiced, and then it has a circuit in there that'll read every so often to make sure that there's full juice. But whenever this gets all the way up and it's fully optimized, whenever you open up, say my, I open up my door, it turns on the interior lights and whatnot in my car. This thing will instantly go in from being solid green right back down and start over again and come back up through. Another feature that this has, so this will not, this has circuitry to where when your battery is down so far in voltage, say you left your headlights on overnight by accident and they didn't turn off, it will not read a vo uh, battery voltage or see that the battery's there whenever it's below. It doesn't really give you a voltage but uh, it won't read. So if you click on this, it'll be just like there's no battery hooked up. Digital multimeter hooked up for DC. I have it hooked to the leads over here, the alligator clips. This is showing you that there's no battery. So what you do is if I tried to hit this, let me go ahead and hit the button. See, it won't go through none of the modes because it doesn't see that there's a battery there. Well, it works the same when a battery gets down to a certain voltage you can do what they call a forced mode. So you hold down on this button and you'll see all of these lights flat, light up and start flashing. Let off the button. Hit the button again. You give it a second. You see it. What that is is it'll force 20 volts for five minutes to the battery. And what that's trying to do is shove enough juice into that battery to where the circuitry in here recognizes that it's hooked up because it has enough of juice. Then you can continue on as a normal charge. So that's how you charge a, a really dead battery. So now if you want to stop that, just hit the mode button. So those are the few features, but now I'll take it over here and show you the accessory I actually have for this that I use all the time rather than the alligator clips. All right, so you got your normal alligator clips here, so I'm gonna go ahead and unhook those. So what I use on this car, and it's an accessory you can buy, these are the M6 eyelets that hook up for a quick disconnect. So you just hook them up, and I've got it running right up my wiring harness here. And look at that. And this stays right underneath the hood, covered up. This is normally covered up, so take that off. And you can plug right in. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. I hook up my charger. I have my little quick connect shoved down in the, down the wiring so you can't even see it nice and hidden away. Plug right in and you're good to go. Take you back over to the bench here and we'll wrap this up. Uh, one last thing I do want to go over. I showed you guys those eyelets I had, the M6 eyelets for a quick disconnect. Uh, it makes it an easy hookup. There's a few other accessories. So if you look here at this manual or at this accessories and more. So here's a few things. Here's what I have here. And then they have the bigger version here, the bigger holes. So these are for M10. Hopefully you could see that. And here's another one that they came up with. So this hooks up to that lead end where I hooked my quick disconnect eyelets to. This will hook up to a cigarette lighter essentially, and it'll maintain your battery. They say it'll maintain it the same as if you hook it up 
the way I did. Um, very interesting. I haven't tried it. Maybe I'll get it and try it just for the heck of it. Uh, I think that's a really cool thing uh, for people that don't have tools, uh, don't have any know-how, even though, you know, like I just did this video, you might be just afraid and that's okay. Uh, I would encourage you to get a few tools and give it a shot. But uh, if you don't want to and you, you're just that afraid, and I'm, I'm completely okay with it. I'll never knock anybody for that. I, I get what it's like to be afraid. Um, that's why I'm here. I, to ma I made this channel. I want to try to pe break people of that fear, but I also want to give you solutions to where you don't miss out uh, just because you don't want, you you can't or are afraid. That's okay. This is a really cool solution. You can still maintain your battery with that uh, plug out right into your cigarette outlet. Throw it on the seat and uh, leave it plugged in. You know that's a really cool one. You can get replacement alligator clips. Uh, this is another one. If you wanted, the, I mentioned the wall mount. This has. This is really cool. You can get the 10 foot extension. I think I may have mentioned it to put on there. So you can mount it on a wall, plug it into an outlet and you got, you know, 13 feet of cord. Um, and then you can just wrap it up whenever you're all done. Uh, it makes it for easy on, easy off. Uh, they also have these plugs. So this is really cool too. They have an option of this. I said they got the, the one, the two, the five and the 10 amp. If you go on their website, well, something else they have is they actually have a direct mount uh, that has the eyelets. Everything is solid wired. You hook it right on, you mount it, you can mount it right on your fender somewhere, leave it in there, wrap up the power cord, and then you can actually have uh, an outlet on the front of your vehicle to just plug an extension cord in and it'll automatically take off all on its own. Uh, there's no buttons to push it. It has one function and that is to charge and maintain the battery. There's no pressing buttons and doing what I just did with all the features. It's a plug and play, plug and go. Um, you know, they even have a splitter. Sometimes, you know, you live in a colder climate, uh, maybe up in Canada um, or up in Alaska, you, you have really cold winter. So they have block heaters. Uh, a lot of people, uh, what it does is circulate the antifreeze and kind of keeps it warm. It helps with uh, cold starts. Uh, it's not as cold, so it's a little bit easier on the vehicle. That's those split lines uh, where you'd plug in on the front of the bumper and it has two outlets. One can go to the charger and the other one can go to the block heater. So now it's a, you pull in your house, you plug it into the outlet on the front of your car. It's being maintained, also being uh, the block heater's running. So now you don't even have to worry about it. It's one cord and you're done. So that's another one to consider as well. So I'll go ahead and end this. Uh, I, I appreciate it if you made it this far. I hope this has helped. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time looking into these when I bought this one. Um, please take a look at NOCO. Uh, don't, I, I'm not going to say anything bad about SeaTech either. Please go take a look at their products too. I've noticed they got some accessories too. I don't know if they have the same. Uh, a lot of people are really big on warranties. I could care less. Uh, this one's got a three. SeaTech's got a five year. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's all up to you. Do, do you value the warranty? Do you value fit and finish? Do you value it being USA made? Um, or does it not, none of this matter which one's cheaper? This one's che cheaper than the SeaTech. Um, the accessories are cheap. Uh, wives and children and parents and everybody's always looking for something to get you for Christmas. Give them this. This is normally something that somebody can afford to get you for Christmas and uh, it'll help maintain your battery in your car. So greatly appreciate it and uh, I'll catch up with you in the next one.